Well, as Margo and uh, Valerie are on their way, why don't uh, we start with Jack. Um, can you tell me how you uh, developed a rapport with Terrence Stamp and Sarah Douglas? Did you uh, have a rehearsal process, or how did you develop that rapport? And some great actors. Um, and everybody knew uh, what they were there for, and uh, it, it worked extremely well. You know, it was, uh, we had a lot of fun. I mean, it was like a, it's like a family when you're when you're doing a picture and you're going to be together that long. You know, um, things come together pretty 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 well. I mean, uh, everybody, we all had a good time. Here she comes. Oh, hi, honey. Hello. Hello. Okay. Thank you. And we also have Aaron Smolinski, who played young Kal El. Oh, the baby. <laughs> um, I kind of wanted to set the stage for this movie. We live in a world where there's superhero movies coming out every month. But back in the late 70s, this was the first serious superhero movie we had. And um, Richard Donner has become a legend uh, in the business. But at the time, he'd been a successful TV director, and he'd made The Omen. So what was it like when you first heard that Richard Donner was making a Superman picture? Me? All of you, yeah. I was living in a little town in Montana. I had a two-year-old baby. I had grown up in northern Canada and was forbidden to read comics, so I really didn't get how big a deal Superman was. And I was in a really bad marriage that I knew I had to get out of. So I didn't know who Richard Donner was, but I knew this was a part that would kind of save my life, so I got down to LA and auditioned for it. Okay. But I didn't, I was pretty dumb about the whole thing, yeah. Okay. I, uh, I was just finishing a picture with Gene Hackman called March or Die, and uh, they brought me over to London to uh, meet Richard, and uh, uh, I liked the whole concept and the idea of what they were doing, so it worked for me. Okay. There's Valerie. Do we have a chair for Valerie? Yeah, absolutely. Nobody came to get me. I didn't know I it started. Sorry. I right. just got here. Okay. Here you are. Okay, sit. Lie down. Banjo. Valerie, we were talking Banjo. about the fact that um, when Superman was made, there were no superhero movies like there are now, like there are so many of. And at the time, uh, with Richard Donner having just done The Omen, what did you think when you heard that Richard Donner was going to direct a movie about Superman? When did you first hear about it? In the kitchen, I was making an omelet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what did, you, what did you think of that? That the omelet was going to be really good. <laughs> Were you contacted by your agent? Yeah, my agent called me and said, um, asked if I wanted to do Superman. Okay, and you... I didn't know anything about it. Didn't know anything it. about it? No. no. Oh, you didn't either. No. I, did, I didn't either, yeah. Mm -mm. Um, and, and Aaron, you were a very young man yeah, at I the was, time. Yeah, I was three, so I had no idea who Richard Donner was or <laughs> Superman. I just knew I was getting free candy and, and food, so that was all you needed for me. Which, ironically, is how they got me to come out of the capsule. Sans clothes was... Um, oh. they, they, yeah, Richard Donner bargained with me. I, at first they gave me a little snow globe, and I was like, no, not doing it. And then they gave me uh, a six pack of Coca-Cola, and I was a little bit more tempted, and then finally um, Richard Donner was like, what? what? What do you want? And I said, Juicy Fruit. And they gave me Juicy Fruit, and he said, had I known it would have been a pack of Juicy Fruit from the beginning, we would have done that. <laughs> so. Now, Aaron, was this the first thing that you had did in, done in the business? Yes, it was. Yeah, it was the very first thing. And I was in Calgary, and they filmed that um, in Blackie, uh, Alberta, which was just outside of Calgary. And there was a big cattle call and uh, auditioned for it. And there was actually three of us that they cast for that part. And I was actually the second choice. Um, but after a couple of rehearsals, the first choice just really wasn't working out, and I was doing everything. So um, they went and used me. Cool. <laughs> Um, can you all talk about uh, working with Richard Donner? Maybe if you had a set story or, or anything you could tell us about uh, what it was like to work with him? He was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a lot of fun to work with. I enjoyed Richard. Uh, Dick was, you know, he's, he's such a professional in what he does and he was, uh, he had done so much homework and he was 
Uh, he knew exactly what he wanted and knew exactly what he was doing and uh, it was a pleasure to work. It's a pleasure to work with a director who, who really knows what he's doing and what he wants to do and what he's looking for. So I, I enjoyed the whole experience with him, was, I thought, terrific. I just loved him. I adored him, adore him to this day. He was one of those rare directors where you would have worked 24 hours a day for him. In fact, at certain points, we actually were hanging from those damn wires and harnesses in agony. And uh, he, because he worked so hard, he was so full of love and big hearted and endlessly played practical jokes. Uh, endlessly, he kept the set happy and laughing, and and so you worked, one worked, I, I did anyway, harder for him than I would have for anyone else at all. He was just great. I think that's why there was a, certainly bitterness on my part when they fired him and, and replaced the cut you just saw, which, how many people thought it was better? Let's face it, yes. <laughs> it's just so much better than the other one. Um, so there was a, there was, um, I, I was pretty frustrated and angry about it because Richard Lester was a good director and a delightful man, but wasn't quite right for the material. I think he was embarrassed to be doing a cartoon and wanted to let the audience know he was a little bit hipper than the cartoon or something. I'm not sure. But anyway, Donner was irreplaceable. Now, you mentioned being in a harness for the flying scenes. Can uh, Margo and Jack, can you talk about what that process was like? <laughs> It was uh, tedious. <laughs> it was painful. <laughs> to say the least. I mean, it was, yeah. you know, you, you're talking about, we broke some technology rules and, and set some precedences. In the, and when they, uh, when they created uh, Zoptic Vision, and, you know, we had this massive 70-foot screen that they put pole arms through. And uh, when we first and they had a body mold, and then we laid it and then they dressed us. And, and you're looking down at concrete 70 feet in the air, you know? And I said, you know, I think you guys ought to put a few cushions down there. He said, well, no, those, those molds are whole. I said, I don't, uh, so anyway, they, they did. And we, uh, but it was a very slow, long, tedious deal. And, and the, the harnesses were, you know, we went through a process of, uh, before we finally acquired a harness maker that could, uh, adequately do something without cutting people's ribs and, and stuff like that. And, uh, the ribs were the least of it. I put a whole sheepskin in my crotch. That got really sore. <laughs> Not a sheep, a sheepskin. I, I, I didn't say nothing. <laughs> I, uh, we actually, uh, they, they went through several guys and I told them, I, I finally grabbed Salk and I said, you know, we did a picture of King Kong and it was a harness maker. We, we went off the log and stuff. I said, and, uh, and he made some tremendous harnesses, and they contacted him, they brought him over, and that's what the guys made the final things that we did. And, and, it, and it worked out pretty well. And we did a lot more flying uh, shots, and Maggie, you did a few. Oh, I did tons. There was yeah. about three months with just Chris and me strapped yeah. together. That'll test a friendship, let me tell you. Yeah, you and I were only strapped together a long, short period of time. <laughs> It was great. You know, overall, you know, Margo's right. You know, the, the, Richard Donner it was set such a tone that uh, I mean, you'd have worked day and night for the guy. I mean, he just it was a well, we had a lot of fun actually, yeah. and we did. It was like a family affair. And I got to fly on Jack's I back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was it was cool. I mean, everybody yeah. got on well, and uh, it was it was good for a picture that big and and as long and as tedious as it was to do. Uh, it, it came out very well, you know, and, and it's proof of the pudding. I mean, here you are decades later, and, and it's still a precedent. It still stands on its own, and, you know, it's, uh, I mean, they had, no one's duplicated the type of things that we did in it so far. You know? So it's so. two pictures that are going to outlive all of us, that they're going to watch for generations. Yeah, I mean, every, every time I, uh, another generation comes up, I mean, it's amazing how many young people that I speak to that say the same thing that the generation before them, you know, and, that, uh, and how fresh it is in people's minds that, that it's like that this picture was just made, you know, and that they really haven't come up with, I mean, uh, they haven't come up with anything, and I, I hope that the, the thing they're coming out with they do well, uh, you know, and, 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 but I don't think they could touch what the first two pictures were. No. 
Valerie. Certainly not going to find another Lois Lane. No. Oh, you're not, sweet. They're I not going to replace any of you. That Amy Adams is quite an amazing actress. I'm waiting to see that. She's a great actress. That should be good. I yeah. mean, it's hard. Very difficult to replace. Chris was so natural yeah. as Clark Kent and Superman. Yeah. And you know, and and they, it just worked so well. I mean, he just he just fit it. He looked it. He felt it. I mean, you you. It's very difficult to replace somebody like that. Except, have, did you see the new guy, Henry? How do you say his last Cavill. name? Cavill on Cavill. the Tudors. I'm a grandmother now, so I don't do anything risque, but I still look at the menu, if you know what I mean. He was sexy. He was really hot on that show. So I thought that was kind of good casting. Well, why don't we talk a little bit more about Christopher Reeve and what it was like to work with him? Valerie, do you have any stories? You got to kiss him. <laughs> I don't remember it very well. I, I know I don't swim very well, and I'm petrified of the water, and I'm really petrified of getting my head underwater because I'm claustrophobic. And I had to jump in and get my head underwater, and um, um, so I got drunk. <laughs> I had almost a whole bottle of champagne, and in I went, and um, I don't remember being frightened, but I don't remember any of it. <laughs> <laughs> worked all right, though. <laughs> it worked. Chris, Chris was not really sexual, a sexy guy. He was, a, he was kind of asexual. My mom would disagree. but You're, A lot of women would disagree. <laughs> uh, and a lot of gay guys would disagree. They thought he was really sexy. But I, um, he wasn't my type. He was too sort of preppy for me. So uh, I would pretend he was Harrison Ford when I kissed him. <laughs> <laughs> he was sexy. So, so the kissing part was, and also we sort of had a brother-sister bicker relationship. And who wants to kiss their brother? It's just not very exciting. It's sort of icky, you know. So, that's. And I never had to kiss him. <laughs> <laughs> well, not on camera, right? <laughs> Do you have any stories, Jack, about working with him? Uh, Chris was fine. Chris is, you know, he was a young kid. You know, he was very young. It was the first picture that he did. Uh, and everybody goes through their trials and tribulations, uh, and you know he's uh, he's gone, and you know let's just leave him there. You know he's uh, he did a great job, uh, and, and, and we're all part of an iconic film. Uh, you know uh, there were trials and tribulations like there are in anything in anything you do, but uh, you know everything we got over everything, and in, in, in the end of the day we wound up with a great picture. It took, I'll, I'll be more blunt, it took Chris about six months to figure out that he didn't know better than the directors and this stuntman and all the other actors and everybody because he was so new to movies mm -hmm. that he, and he was so young and when we're all that young you just think you know everything, I did, uh, and, then, and then he started to realize he didn't know everybody else's job and, and so he grew a lot as a human being. Watching him kind of grow up on those movies was really interesting. He went through a lot of changes. Yeah, he did. No, he did. I mean, he was like, what was he, 26 years old and a 16-year-old brain yeah, when he came. Yeah. Now be careful. That's not nice. <laughs> I, I remember I actually worked with him because I was in uh, Superman 3 as well, and that's when I first met him. And to me, uh, being an eight-year-old, meeting him, I remember um, thinking when I shook his hand, my hand basically disappeared into his hand because yeah. it, it, he had just had these massive hands. But he was very, to me, very calming and he very relaxed me. He was very warm and kind-hearted. Um, and he just made being on set for me, you know, that much more enjoyable. And, and Richard Donner had that same uh, feeling to me when on Superman when I worked with him. Um, and that's why I have so many memories of filming those th that scene for those eight days just because Dick was just so warm and kind and let me talk in his walkie-talkie and, and all that so it was interesting that I kind of got that same feeling from Chris as well and Chris went through this incredible experience on the first movie where he had his first child with this wonderful woman Gay Exton and his hands you mentioned his hands I have a Polaroid that's starting to fade 
he had that baby, he came over, it was Christmas, and he came over to my house for Christmas dinner right after we were all in London. And he was so mind blown. Uh, he thought he'd given birth. He said, I did great, Margie, I did great. And he had this baby in that enormous hand, and he was just so mesmerized. And he went through so many life stages filming that, that he grew from a boy into a man, and then when he had his accident, he really grew into something extraordinary. I mean, really extraordinary to go through all that and go way inside and look at places inside you've never looked at and, and come out so full of generosity of spirit and faith and givingness that his, the arc of his life is quite extraordinary, really extraordinary. And he really did. He really yeah, was amazing. Yeah, after the accident, he became a much, much, yeah. much, much more humanitarian individual. Yeah. Um, Aaron, uh, do you have any memories of what it took to get you to lift that truck? Was that a different kind of bribe? Yeah, that was. <laughs> um, no, I think, you know, I just would, and I kind of still have that same whatever attitude today. I just would, did it. That was no problem. Um, I remember saying to my, uh, my dad, you know, my arms are sore because I was on my tippy toes and had my hands up. But I think um, Dick was just so nice and so caring and so warm. And I think that's part of the reason that my parents allowed me to stand under a real truck with only one wire holding it. Is that what you... Oh, yeah, yeah. One wire. I wouldn't have let you. No hoists, no jacks, no what if. Yeah, afterwards. But I think because... Dick was just, you know, that's what it was. So um, I had no problem, you know, coming out naked. That was an issue, but uh, <laughs> uh, standing under a truck, yeah, no, no problem with that at all. Sounds like the Saul kinds. <laughs> no, I think it would have cost a little bit more money to have two some wires. two wires. I said it sounds like the Saul kinds. <laughs> right. Now, Valerie, um, at the time, Gene Hackman and Ned Beatty were much more known for drama. So what was it like working with them in the, all these comedic scenes, and how did you all develop that, that comic timing that you had together? Well, the movie I had done before Superman was Lenny. With Dustin Hoffman? Yeah. Oh, I wanted that part so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I didn't know I could do comedy. I just did my lines and hit my mark, and... You got what you got. Yeah. I and drank her champagne. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> glass of champagne, and I can do anything. <laughs> do you have any stories for us about working with uh, Hackman and Beatty? Well, we were um, in Canada, and the they had chosen to shoot. America in the summertime in the cornfields or something in Canada and it was supposed to be nice and sunny and great weather and whoever picked Canada picked the spot that was uh, the rainy season so we were they were going nuts I mean every day we would have to go to the set and sit there and just watch it rain and not shoot and then go home again for, you know, for the uh, purpose of saying that we were at least trying to shoot. And um, so it was getting to be rather precarious with the producers. And I had t-shirts made up saying, <laughs> another day, another $200,000. <laughs> and the day I gave them out, the producers came onto the set to see what was going on. <laughs> and there we were with our little t-shirts on. In Drumheller, wasn't it? Huh? Drumheller, Alberta. Is that where it was? Yeah, it was yeah. in Drumheller, yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. Home of the dinosaurs. Dinosaur wars. <laughs> yeah. Dinosaur wars. How about uh, Jack or Margo, do you have any stories working with Gene Hackman? Uh, he was so brilliant that I kept forgetting I was supposed to be acting with him and I'd just watch him and take after take and then the little voice in my head would go, you're supposed to talk, get her. And it was, oh, I was terrible. I mean, he was amazing. He was just, he did I a just different done thing. Film with him. Different thing every take, brilliant every take. He, he kind of blew me away. He was, and he was a great guy. He was just really Such a great a guy. a school actor, you know. He, yeah. When he walked on the set, boy, he, if you didn't have your homework done, he would let you know. 
And Gene was Gene was a he was a professional, but he was he was a very kind, giving actor. He was good. Guys, I have to go because I have to get a plane home. And if you don't get the last plane, you're stuck in Salt Lake City for a long time, which is not a lot of fun. Um, so thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Margot. So Margo. great to see you again, Gary. Take care. Sure. He's with Mark. Lie down. He saw a camera and he's trying to get in it in the shot. <laughs> oh, it's takes after me. Right. When did you first hear about this Donner cut that they were putting together? I didn't even know there was a Donner cut. I didn't know that Richard Lester had directed half the film. I'd like to. I don't. Where was I? Did you maybe just do all your scenes with Donner and they were already done? I did all my scenes with Donner and they were done. I didn't work with Lester at all. Okay. Yeah, hey, uh, I, had, I had heard about it. He he had tried for a couple of years to uh, to get it he, uh, to put it together, and then when they finally did, uh, they called me and said they were doing. I, I thought it was a brilliant idea because uh, you know, it was so sad that. I mean, had he directed uh, two, he would have done three and four, and uh, and it would have been a whole different series of films. And you know, he was uh, uh, he had such a passion. He and Tom Mankiewicz both had a phenomenal passion for the film, and uh, and they you know it's just the things that happened were really tragic because it was set bad for the Superman fan base. You know, I, I felt the worst for them, but I was thrilled when they said that they had finally. Put it together, and I said, "Well, wow, man! How could he finish it? Because with he, although he had shot like 85, 86 percent of the movie, we were so much in just two that they had to stop to go back to release one. You know, we were, it was everybody was just engrossed, and it. it was such a cool movie. Why did they get rid of it? Uh, <laughs> there's several versions of the story, and I, and from what I know to be a fact, and I, I remember when." We were on the set one day and I saw Richard Lester coming on the set with the Salkinds and I said, something's not right. And uh, They owed him a picture. And uh, I mean, how, how do you cut Marlon Brando out of a picture? They cut Marlon Brando out? Out of two. What you see in the Donner cut, you see 20 minutes of Marlon Brando that should have been Marlon and Superman too. And it was the mother that played the role instead. And they, uh, they cut Marlon 20 minutes out of two man too. So how do you cut Brando out of a picture? They Who didn't want to pay they? him. Soul kinds. Oh my God. They didn't want to pay him. And they, you know, and, and Richard uh, and, and Dick was so into the film and that they, you know, he wouldn't take any of their shortcuts. And he, and, and I think that they just, uh, found the way or reason for getting rid of him, and, uh, and and they didn't want to pay him either. And, you know, and it just uh, it was sad because you know working with Lester compared to Donner was like night and day. It really, was. in fact, you know, Christopher should have stood up and said, "I am not coming back if Donner doesn't come back," and and we'd have had Donner. You know, but uh, you know, I mean, Gene Hackman never came back. Gene Hackman never came back. You know, and, and I, I almost didn't I go back. That's why I never came back. I wasn't going to go back either. And, you know, it was, uh, they, uh, it was sad. It really was sad. I felt bad because it was a whole different atmosphere. But, you know, it was so much, there was so much of us in it that, uh, you know, the picture came out good. You know, Superman 2 is a good picture. But I, I happened to personally like the Donner cut. And I wish it would have been able to have been finished properly because I think it would have been a lot better, you know. So you guys watched Superman 2? This the the Donner, Donner cut. The Donner cut. It, and can you get it? Yeah, it's on DVD. I'll, I'll get it back. Okay. I'd like to it? see it. You haven't seen it? No. Oh, my God. What, where would I see it? Right here. A couple hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, it's been out. It's it, been it, on DVD it, for it was, a few I'll tell you what. When they came out, it sold out the first two weeks it was gone. They, they, I mean, it just was a smash hit. They just... Psh, it was such a... You mean huge. they released... Oh yeah, we had a big cut. screening and everything. And, and, they and, released the Donner yeah. cut, and then what happened? They took it back? No, no, you can still, you can still get, get it. it. No, you can get it. You can get a DVD of it. The shocking thing is how out. different I mean, it, it is just, from what was released in 1980. It's so different, yeah. because I guess they went back and just 
dumped a lot of scenes and had Richard Lester redo them. Well, you got to understand when you when a director comes on a picture, for him to have his name as a director, he has to shoot more than fifty percent of the movie. That's the guild law. So it was sad because he, you know it was just. Uh, there was so much great footage, as you've just seen. You know, the Donner Cut is terrific. Doesn't have as much comedy in it and stuff. It just would have been, a, if Richard would have done Superman 2 the way it was supposed to have been done, it would have been absolutely brilliant. Do we have any questions out there? I'm the only one asking questions. <laughs> yeah. I was in the movie. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Myself? Um, well, go ahead, Lenny. Lenny. Yeah, she was great in Lenny. <laughs> it was a great movie. Or Slaughterhouse. Uh, Farewell, My Lovely was a great movie. It was the first movie I ever did. and uh, it, I, I, it was my best friend, Robert Mitchum. And, you know, it was a, so it, it was a great movie. And for me, that was you know, the, the most touching film I've done. You know, Superman was a great success. Uh, Dragnet was a good film for me. I enjoyed Dragnet with Dan Aykroyd and Hanks. And, uh, and, a, and, a, and a guy who's downstairs here, we did a picture that never really was sad. It didn't get the acclaim that it should have because it was really uh, a dynamite little movie called The Baltimore Bullet with Bruce Boxleitner and Jimmy Coburn and Omar Sharif. And it, was a, it, was, it was actually a, a pretty good film, but they just ran out of money in distribution of it. And it was sad never really got the play that it should have gotten. But, but Superman was a great expo today. I mean, we had a lot of fun doing it and everything. But, uh, and I enjoyed doing the role not speaking because uh, I had, you know, Jackie Gleason did a picture called Gigo. And, uh, and it always intrigued me to do a role where I was doing facial expressions and body language. And, and to have the opportunity to do that was great for me. And, and it worked very well and I was very pleased with it. So. Well, my last question is, uh, Mario Puzo wrote the initial screenplay, which I understand was the size of a phone book. Did either of you ever get that script, or did you just get the one that Mankiewicz did with Donner? No, I read the Puzo script. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, was, Can you uh, describe that a little bit? Because I heard no, it was completely it, different. Puzo was, uh, had a terrific mind, you know, for writing. And, uh, but it was away from what Donner saw. And uh, I think that... Uh, Donner and Mankiewicz had rehearsed Superman. I mean, they had, they had done so much research on, on the Superman character, and, 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 and Dick had a, a clear path of what he saw would work, and, and it worked. You know, he was right. You know, it, uh, the Apuzo script went all over the place, and there was a lot of things in there, and it would have been a bit convoluted, you know, and it had to be trimmed in anyway. So um, Mankiewicz was a tremendous addition to, uh, to what they put down on the screen. And I mean, here we sit in testimony to that, you know. Well, I've loved these movies since my mother took me as a little boy. And uh, I'm very honored to share the stage with the three of you. So thank you so much for your time and for being here. And let's have a round of applause for them. Thank you.